In this video, I'm going to show you a recent milestone that I achieved. I did a 90 second handstand. I'm especially happy about this because it's an all time record for me and because I did it since recovering from my recent shoulder injury. I feel like this is clear evidence that I'm on the right track. I've rehabbed my shoulder, or at least I'm in the process of rehabbing it, and I've managed to work out hard and make genuine progress at the same time. Okay, I'm going to just jump right into it here. One thing you might notice right off the bat is that my toes are slightly out of the frame. That was not deliberate. I thought I set the camera up better. And no, I am not cheating by touching something with my toes. You can clearly see me wavering back and forth throughout. And although I was irritated that I screwed up the framing of the video, I inadvertently captured something interesting. At the beginning, my toes are completely out of the frame, but by about a minute into it, my toes are completely visible. And this illustrates one of the main difficulties in holding a handstand. As you get tired, you inevitably sink in your shoulders. And this becomes part of a vicious cycle. You get tired, it gets harder to maintain an extended position, and you start sinking in your shoulders. As you sink in your shoulders, it requires greater effort to hold the handstand. And that makes you tired faster, which makes you sink more in your shoulders. And eventually, no matter how strong or well-balanced you are, you either collapse or lose your balance. And if you look closely now, you can see that my toes are just starting to come into view, and it gets worse. Incidentally, one thing you might ask is this. Why would you do this? Training very long handstands seems tedious and painful. To which I would reply, it's even worse than that. It's like extremely boring torture. But I did it because number one, it felt like something that was safe to train with my compromised shoulder. And number two, I want to train one arm handstands, and this seems like sort of a prerequisite. Anyway. It looks like I'm starting to get a little shaky over there. Okay, that's it. And success. The success part was that I looked at my little clock and it looked like I had made just over 90 seconds, which I had. I was pretty excited. Here are a couple of still pictures from early in the hold and late in the hold so that you can see how much I sank in my shoulders. Clearly keeping your shoulders extended when you start to get tired is a big part of the battle. Okay, so let me talk about how I trained for it. Now the standard advice for training this kind of thing is to use a grease the groove type approach. A common way to go about it would be to do several handstands every day, but to only hold them for about half of your max time. That way you get a lot of practice while always staying relatively fresh. But for me, that kind of approach is not an option. I'm quite old to be doing this kind of thing, and my shoulders are already compromised. It's not safe for me to do things like handstands without warming up extensively. And it's just not practical for me to warm up for half an hour just to hold a couple of handstands multiple times a day. So what I did was I trained handstands in every workout, which is only three times a week, but that's the best I could do. And I didn't do a lot of handstands, but I held each one for a very long time. I would typically do just three holds with start times three minutes apart, and I would hold the handstands for as long as I could. Here are some typical recent results. You can see that I was averaging over a minute per hold. So that's more than three minutes of hold time in just over seven minutes which is pretty intense. Now you might argue that I could still use a grease the groove type approach. For example, I could do 10 shorter holds interspersed throughout each workout. That method could work and I might try it in the future. But my natural inclination is to train very intensely so I decided to do very long holds. Anyway, I feel like it's valuable to deliberately train while you're fatigued. After all, if you wanna be able to hold it for a very long time, you're going to have to learn to hold it while your arms are shaking and it's getting hard to breathe. I think it really helps to get used to being in that space, even though it's painful. If you're going to use this method, timing your holds is important because you really need motivation to hold them for those critical extra couple of seconds each time, which is where I think the gains really come. Also, if you don't time yourself, you really don't know if you're improving or not. I time mine by just using a clock. I tried doing it like this, but it's very distracting. No matter where you put the clock, if you try to focus your eyes on it, even for a split second, it tends to make you lose your balance. So I just put it in front of me. I can't see it when I'm in the handstand, but it still helps. I get immediate feedback the second I come down. One thing that really helps with getting your handstand very solid and holding it for a long time is getting your shoulders as straight as possible. It's when your shoulders are straight and all your joints are stacked that you have to exert the least amount of effort to hold the position. And the straighter they are, the easier it is to resist sinking in your shoulders. Unfortunately, 
I haven't been able to get my shoulders completely straight. Prior to my shoulder injuries, I was stretching my shoulders pretty aggressively. But since my shoulder got really bad, and rehab and all that, I can't really do that. So instead, I've been doing a lot of passive hanging, and I think that's been slowly stretching my shoulders out. So I'm hoping to eventually get to a completely straight handstand. As far as handstand duration, my lifetime goal is two minutes. But I decided that once I reached 90 seconds, I would allow myself to go back to training one-arm handstands. I stopped training them a few years ago because I wasn't making much progress and they were really chewing up my wrists. So this time, I'm hoping to do it smarter. Here's a few videos of my first attempts. As you can see, they were pretty terrible at first, but they've slowly gotten better. I'm trying to get to the point where I can reliably get onto one hand with only a finger assist from the other hand and also shrug my shoulder upward like the experts say you should. I'm sure this will be a very long road, but it's really fun to work on. And Unlike the last time I trained these, this time I'm watching a lot of videos by experts on how to train them properly. I don't want to say much about it now since I'm just starting, but I'm optimistic that by training them in a more sensible way that I can make progress. I've decided that the most important handstand related goals for me are really good handstand push-ups, possibly 90 degree handstand push-ups, and one arm handstands. If I can achieve that, at my age, I'll be happy. I'll consider myself a success. Other than that, and a two minute handstand, my only other long term goal is that I want to still be able to do a handstand when I'm 100 years old. Stick around to see if I make it. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment if you have any thoughts on any of this or any advice for me. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more content like this. Good luck with your training, and I'll see you in the next video.